Hey, this is Warren Redlick. We know about Tesla bot. Elon has talked about it. Tesla has talked about doing this Tesla bot program. They're hiring for the Tesla bot program. There's something really exciting that might be coming for the Tesla bot program. This is my speculation, but I think it's really makes sense. Are you ready? Let's go. So the big idea is what if Tesla had Tesla bot as a beta that you could buy a Tesla bot early on when it's not that functional and you by using it in the limited capacities it's capable of would effectively be helping Tesla train bot to be doing so much more. That's sort of the vision I have here. I think there's a fundamental challenge for Tesla. They make the bots, how do they train them? Do you make a few bots and train just a few bots? Do you make a thousand bots, 10,000 bots, 100,000 bots? And how do you train them? What environments do you put them in? How do the bots get to it? Because the problem is that you can't train the bots if you only have a few. The way Tesla's AI, FSD, all this Tesla vision system works is you have to expose the device, the software that's learning to a large number of experiences. And that's what you train the software on. And as it gets better and better, you have to expose it to more and more environments, more and more edge cases. So one scenario is Tesla makes a thousand bots or 10,000 bots and keeps them in Tesla's own environment or puts it in environments that Tesla has access to, to train the bot in various things, you know, walking, perceiving the environment, operate, doing certain tasks. That's one scenario. A lot of people seem to think that Tesla bots first use is going to be in Tesla factories. I think factory work is much more complicated than what bot will be able to do early on what humans do in factories is complex. What makes a lot more sense is distributing bots to Tesla customers who are willing to pay for bot. So you have bot, and my ballpark guess is that it's going to cost Tesla no more than $10,000 per bot once they're manufacturing them at some scale. It costs Tesla, let's say $30,000 to make a Tesla Model 3, which weighs 4,000 pounds, has a very large battery pack has you know glass and windows and and large electric motors powerful electric motors all that tesla bot has some complexity to it but it is much much smaller it's 125 pounds so there's and there's the battery pack whatever batteries it's going to have it can be a lot less which is a big component of the cost of a vehicle my gut hunch is that it will cost tesla in the ballpark of ten thousand dollars when they're manufacturing that relatively small scale ten thousand a year twenty thousand a year so on and Tesla gets to the point where they make 100,000 bots and they distribute them to Tesla owners who are willing to pay $10,000 a piece. Now, why does this make sense from Tesla's perspective first? It makes sense from Tesla's perspective because if they make 100,000 bots and they don't sell them and they cost $10,000 a piece, then Tesla spent $1 billion on these bots. And yes, they can afford that billion dollars, but they spent a billion dollars. They didn't get anything for it. There's no revenue from that billion dollars you spent. And they use that and they train the bots and they only have limited environments to train them in. On the other hand, if you distribute 100,000 bots to 100,000 Tesla customers who pay $10,000 a piece, now you broke even on your manufacturing cost of $10,000 a bot. You spent a billion dollars making the bots. You sell them $10,000 a piece to 100,000 customers. You got a billion dollars back. So you broke even on the bot manufacturing itself. And now the bots are trained in a wide variety of environments. I live in a one bedroom condo where the garage is downstairs. So the bot's gonna have to climb stairs. I've got hardwood floors. Somebody else might have carpet. Somebody else might take their bot for a walk in the woods. You might, there's so many, take a bot for a walk on the beach. There's all kinds of different environments that we can, maybe walking in a crowded shopping mall versus walking on a boardwalk on an elevated walk, uh, wood walkway through a forest in so many different environments that you could take bot to if you had a bot that it'd be difficult for Tesla to replicate that. And now you get all these different experiences for bot. And it's a lot easier for Tesla to train the software if the bots are exposed to a wide variety of environments as opposed to very simple environments. Now, that's from Tesla's perspective. They're basically getting us to do beta testing of their bots for free to help them train the bot to make the bot more capable. The bot learns to walk well in various environments. It learns to perceive in various environments. It will start learning to manipulate objects in various environments. What's the value to me, the consumer, when I buy Tesla bot? So I spend $10,000 and keep in mind, a lot of people are spending $12,000 for FSD when FSD is still really in beta and the people who are paying $12,000 aren't even getting the beta. 
They're getting some limited features for driving the car in some circumstances that you don't get on basic autopilot. So there's a lot of Tesla customers who are willing to pay $10,000, $12,000 or more for something that isn't that functional yet. And why are we willing to do that? We're willing to do that, one, because it's cool to have it. Two, because we are hopeful that in the future it will develop additional features and become more capable. And we will now have this bot at a lower price. And when it becomes fully featured, it's worth a lot more. Same thing with Tesla bot in beta. When we initially buy it, let's say $10,000, it won't be very functional. It won't be able to do that much. It's still learning to walk in various environments. It's still learning to perceive various environments. It's not capable of doing a lot of tasks. But gradually you can train it. Hey, bring me a beer from the refrigerator, right? Something really simple. Hey, go down to the car, pick up the groceries, bring them upstairs. These are fairly simple tasks, but they will be hard for bot initially, and it might do a bad job of a lot of them. But over time, as it gets better at a variety of tasks, at understanding a variety of environments, at navigating a variety of environments, the bot experience goes up to the training computer, whether it's Dojo or an NVIDIA uh, training cluster, and it learns to handle more situations. And over time, your bot becomes more capable. So you pay $10,000 for a bot today, and maybe it's only worth $10,000 or less for the first couple of years, but at some point, it develops enough skills that you're able to now do more with it, whether it's for yourself or maybe it's able to do work where you could rent it out to the local fast food restaurant and say, hey, this will replace one of your workers. It'll work 4,000 hours a year instead of 2,000 hours a year. This is going to do $60,000 of work for you because a $10 an hour worker really costs the employer $15 an hour when you consider all the costs of having this employee 4,000 hours of work is $60,000. You replace one worker on two shifts and all of a sudden you're generating $60,000 in value for, for this fast food restaurant. Maybe the fast food restaurant pays you $50,000 or $40,000 for that. You're saving them money. They're getting something out of it. It looks cool to the customers that there's a bot walking around. You'll find businesses that are willing to do that. And now I paid $10,000 for something and maybe I'm able to rent my bot out and make twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year for a few years before the bot becomes either obsolete or no longer works. There's some hope that I'm going to be able to earn an income on the bot. I'm not saying it's guaranteed. And that's the thing. Just like when you bought FSD five years ago, there was no guarantee that FSD was actually going to work. You were hopeful it was going to work, but you were paying for an option on a potentially bright future. Same thing with beta bot. You buy a beta bot, you're paying $10,000. It's cool to have. You can show it off to your friends. You can do stuff with it and see how it works. And initially it's pretty lame. And then after six months, it starts to be able to do more. After a year, it's able to do more. Two years, it's able to do more. You're betting that Tesla will be able to develop this bot into something a lot more functional. And, you know, the first round bot probably won't be that great. And really the second generation bot's going to be a lot better. Just like the new Model Y is significantly better than the 2017 Model 3, which, or the 2018 Model 3, which is significantly better than the 2012 Model S. So it's it's a fun idea. I think it makes a lot of sense for Tesla. I think it makes a lot of sense for a lot of Tesla customers. And not every Tesla customer has to do it, right? We've got 2 million Teslas out there. If you want to do 100,000 bots, you only need 1 in 20 Tesla customers willing to try this out. What do you think? Would you buy a Tesla bot in beta and have it drive, have it walk around your house and do other things with it? Is that something you'd be interested? Would you pay $10,000 for it? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please check out my other videos. Please support this channel on the Locals platform or Patreon or YouTube channel. Links in the description below. Please check out the t-shirts and water bottles at elonbits.com. And thank you so much for watching.